Welcome to Cool Explorations. I want to start by stating that although some of these things I state may seem slightly offensive at first glance, um, but before getting upset and working yourself up about it, I encourage you to think, stop and really think. Don't be offended so easily, it only gets in the way of progress. Changes are made by people stating opinions and meshing all of these opinions together. This is what makes up our world, and more importantly, our great nation of Canada. Everything I say is said with the utmost respect. Often we search and crave to find offense where none is intended. Open your minds, open your eyes, don't be so narrow in your thoughts. Here in Canada we have several basic and fundamental issues. Like all other countries, our problems sadly start from the top and work their way down to the bottom. These problems are as follows, and I will cover each of these problems throughout this uh, essay uh, video I'm doing. Our electoral system is outdated and it needs reform. Uh, second is equalized payments. The third is the amount of power focused in just two provinces. And the fourth is unequal equality. The fifth is lack of leadership. And the sixth thing that our country really struggles with is, with is our lackluster immigration policies. In our electoral system, we use a first-past-the-post system. This type of system works in theory, so long as the seat distribution matches the populations of the whole country. That means that the population bases that are small should have less seats in Parliament. In Canada, however, this is not necessarily the case. Our representation does not reflect the population of Canada, which show that the Conservatives actually had a small victory in obtaining the popular vote but they lost by a couple of dozen seats to the Liberals in our 2019 election. If the seats were properly distributed, then we would have seen uh, more of a matched and balanced uh, parliament. Uh, it would have been a slight minority government for the, for the Conservatives, but uh, this is not the case. In this case, it was um, heavily cited to the Liberals um, due to them taking the big um, areas that have a lot more seats. If we then take a closer look at this system, we will find that the maritime provinces, which have much smaller population bases than many other ridings in the West, um, yet PEI still has four seats representing them in the House of Commons for just over 142,000 voters where the Western Ridings have one seat for much larger bases of population. Uh, and realistically, uh, PEI should probably only have two seats. Um, this leads to inequalities in representation and unrest in areas like Western Canada who feel that their voices are not being heard. A good point considering that by the time that the election is closed for Eastern voters and still open for Western voters, the election has already been called. The West just determines whether it's minority or majority, but sometimes they don't even do that if Quebec uh, all votes for that same party. Um, all ridings that have less than 50,000 voters need to be combined with surrounding ridings, in my opinion, so that it better reflects the other ridings and the actual population. Uh, the exception for this would be the territories, of course, because they each do deserve to have one seat each. They have uh, around that 50,000 or less, a little bit over maybe, um, in each of these territories. Um, and this is exactly the kind of thing that has led to the disconnect that is felt between the eastern and western halves of this great nation we call Canada. You may be thinking, what then does equal representation look like? Uh, equal representation would involve taking a closer look at where the country has the greatest population basis and awarding the appropriate number of seats to these areas, then taking away seats from less populated areas. Combine these ridings uh, to match that of the more heavily populated areas. So give PI, for example, one or two seats in Parliament instead of the four that they have. Making representation accurately reflect the voter base in these areas will mean policies that actually reflect the views of Canadians as a whole, not just two provinces. It will also mean parties and leaders elected that actually reflect popular vote, 
equal representation would also reduce the occurrences of our Prime Minister, Trudeau, openly declaring war on the Western provinces. He has done this by his speech right before the election, saying he will fight the oil industry, pipelines, and anyone who fights for them. A Prime Minister should not ever say this about the economy that has supported and propped up this country financially and should be encouraging all parts of the country. The fact that he still won re-election speaks volumes about the lack of equal representation in addition the implementation of the carbon tax was a direct shot across the bows of the western ship. This has only been implemented for a short period of time and yet it is costing farmers businesses, the oil industry, truckers, and each individual a ton of money that they cannot afford. Uh, the adding of a federal tax onto the carbon tax is also repulsive. Charging a service tax on a tax the majority of Canadians feel is a complete disservice. To top that off, as usual, Trudeau has completely ignored the complaints of the Western provinces and of many Canadians against the tax. He claims that it is helping Canadians through rebates they get, but it is actually causing more harm than good. These cheap parlor tricks of rebates is a smokescreen to lessen anger, but does not cover the fact that it does not replace the immediate cost of the tax and the devastation it is causing in our industries that are supposed to be supplying money for the country as a whole. Proper distribution of representation would mean the voice of the majority is heard and acted upon. To add insult to injury, the federal government has completely ignored the suicide rate rise in Alberta since the oil field uh, has basically completely collapsed. These details lay mainly at the hands of Trudeau and his American backers as that is how he got elected, was because of uh, his American backers. It's been proven in the um, Over the Barrel video. If you haven't watched it, I would watch that documentary. It's on YouTube. Uh, the next issue is the equalization payments. These payments do not accurately represent the amount of money each province brings in each year. This was originally set up with the intent of providing money to keep the have-not provinces afloat. Instead, it has been abused and ignored by numerous Prime Ministers of all parties. Payments like these need to be changed and adjusted each year based on profits, or done away with completely so this abuse is not done so easily. Either do away with it altogether so that each province supports themselves, or make them truly reflect the money each province has. It is not right or just to have two provinces like Alberta and Saskatchewan, uh, more so Alberta, hemorrhaging funds after provinces they support through equalization payments use that money to destroy these provinces. Quebec is certainly not a have-not province and should be paying equalization payments, not taking the largest slice of them. Over 13 billion a year they are now scheduled to get. Alberta and Saskatchewan have been in deficits since the Liberal Party bought and then failed to proceed with the pipeline developing. That would keep that would keep the economies strong. Just because a very slim margin of people in a microscopic portion of the country want it stopped. Which brings me to our next point um, that needs addressing right away. The amount of power that two provinces out of 13 provinces and territories have over the rest of the country. I touched on this briefly before, but we'll look at it a bit more closely now. Ontario and Quebec determine who is in power and influence and decide all of our policies as a result. In our 2019 election, the Bloc Party was elected heavily in Quebec. This means that they will be able to further push through policies with the Liberals, who are packed with Francophones, sympathetic to Quebec, that are in Quebec's favour. Their leader, in the, his speech after the election, stated that he will only work with the government on a case-by-case -case basis and only if he feels it benefits Quebec. So he doesn't really care about the country as a whole. This self-focus is detrimental to our country's unity. The greed from Quebec has drained the funds from our nation's accounts for far too long. Why does one province dictate the terms and make demands that the rest of the country has to kowtow to? 
Ontario and Quebec need to start thinking about Canada as a whole and not focus on just themselves. We are a country, not a collection of people bred to serve and feed two provinces. We're not slaves. All Canada deserves a say and should be able to influence policy, deciding how our country is run and how funds are spent. All Canadians have this right. One province, Quebec, should not be given special rights and regulations separate from the rest of the country. They are not above the rest of us. We are all equal and a part of Canada, not meant to be walked all over. Every province, territory, and member of our great country deserves the same rights, laws, and freedoms. If Quebec does not like living by the same rules and regulations as the rest of us, then let them leave. They're welcome to it. They voted in their, their block party. Block party yeah. usually supports that. So they're perfectly free to do just that. We live in a wonderfully free country and are not here to serve the interests of only Ontario and Quebec. Which leads me to my next point. And before I continue, let me reiterate not to get offended or fly off the handle at me. Read it, think on it. I'm not trying to offend nor insult any groups, races, religions, or genders. Only to summarize the feelings and sentiments I've heard, researched, and am now reflecting on. I'm trying to come at it from a balanced perspective. I'm sorry if it doesn't come across that way. In Canada, we have many groups asking for and demanding equality. Equality is the best thing for the world and our country. That being said, we do have groups that are demanding equality. And this is the part that many people will get defensive at. They think that the truth behind the statements, but think of the tr truth behind the statements before getting upset. They already have many more rights than the rest of the country. Equality means that every person is equal and is entitled to the same rights, freedoms, and opportunities and follow the same laws. This, however, is not always the case. First and foremost, we have Quebec, as mentioned before, who have far more rights, privileges, and their own set of laws that they abide by. Some things that no other province has the ability to do. Um, yes, we can make our own laws. Um, just not to the extent that we see um, Quebec being able to. They force people to speak French mainly, and a French signage where it has to be the most prominent on there is your French, and they're not able to set up businesses if they're not going to um, be mostly and predominantly French, uh, which we could never do as English speakers. There would be a huge uproar from the Francophone community in Canada um, if we were to try and do this, as there should be. Um, and I think that us English need to be standing up for ourselves a little bit more in terms of this, because it really is not right. Um, this is a free country. English and French are both our official languages, and as such, they're entitled to the same rights. People of any language have the right to have signage in their, in their language and uh, to make that signage predominant and to speak whatever language they choose at the business, whether English or French, because both are official languages. That being said, you do still have to be respectful of the main language in the area and try to communicate as best you can with the area's language. Quebec should also not have separate tax laws and get special treatment and funding for their colleges and universities. Just read today an article in which uh, Liberal MP Stephen Guibault has inaccurately stated that Twitter, uh, through Twitter, that 70% of Canadians voted for carbon tax in the past election, and then goes on to rub the Western provinces' faces in it, um, in the fact that fighting the tax was lost in court twice. Accuracy is key when making statements, especially as a politician. Um, Twitter is kind of a death hole. I'm not sure why politicians use that as much as they do. Um, if he actually looked at the votes, he would see that in actuality, more Canadians voted for parties that oppose the carbon tax. But that isn't really um, what the election was about. It was about, and as a politician, he should realize that elections are about more than one point in a platform. It was about a platform as a whole. Rubbing the tax in Western Canadians' faces is not the way to create unity and heal wounds, especially since he gladly accepts the equalization payments that get shipped to him from the West. The next group that is demanding equality and deserves equality is our nation's forefathers, the Aboriginal or First Nations people. With these different tribes, it does get complex with different treaties and agreements um, between the different tribes. 
Many live on the reserve land, and yet there are still many who do live off of the reserve, um, and they are choosing to work in other cities or towns. And this will apply to all, though mostly they, those still on reserves. They're given special rights due to the aforementioned treaties, um, which they have, they have a right to those because it was, it was the treaty. Um, these treaties were signed long ago, though. I'm not saying that they do not deserve the status they have. All I'm saying is that these treaties are outdated. Both sides need to come together and make new treaties that are more modern and suited to our current situation and standards. We as Canadians embrace all people. It is what makes our country the wonderful place it is. With that, though, comes responsibilities. Each group needs to be dealt with fairly and with equality in mind. To get back to treaties, special hunting rights should be changed to meet the hunting and fishing rights of all Canadian citizens. Money should not be given just to attend school, even if said person only attends the bare minimum of classes. Handing out money each month is not the right move, along with reserving spots in programs and professions. Removing all at once of, of these kind of things is not a good solution. It has to be done gradually with respect for the individuals involved, so the Aboriginal people need to be a big time factor in that sitting down and discussing what they think is fair and right and the government needs needs to listen because they do deserve respect and they deserve um for the for treaties to be honored um help out our fellow canadians and your tribal members um they need to focus on becoming self-sufficient and have a true pride in themselves and their heritage Taking handouts no matter who the person breeds laziness. And I'm not just saying that about natives. No, this, appri uh, appro this applies to everyone, no matter which race, group, religion, gender, or age group. We need to take a look at our welfare system, for example, and how many on welfare don't even have the pride or desire to go out and find jobs. Again, some have no choice but to be on the program, but there are far too many who do abuse it. Uh, and so it does need reformation. Aboriginal heritage and culture are both fascinating and intriguing. They're filled with much positive and some negative, just like every single cultural group on the planet. We have all had bad things happen to us, and each group has also had negative moments in the millennia we have existed. Forgive the past. Don't forget, just forgive. Let it lie there. Allow yourselves to move on and better yourselves by focusing on positive things from your culture, your amazing, wonderful culture. Getting stuck focusing on negative parts of history and, your, and in your lives makes it impossible to move beyond. Trust me, I have a lot of awful things that have happened in my life, um, which has caused me a lot of PTSD and has been a struggle to move past. I have had to accept it, forgive, and to move forward, though. Never forget, as it is a part of you, but don't let these events distract you from what you really need to do to move ahead. Positivity is the only way to get through life and make changes in your life or the life of your people. It will greatly improve your people's lives and their current situation, especially on reserves. Another group of people is our immigrants, who do fill a necessary role in our country and the workforce. But when you do come to Canada, take on the customs and traditions. Work to fit into our society as a whole. Too many people uh, are coming here, and no, I'm not saying all, because I know very, a lot of East Indians and Filipinos who uh, are wonderful, amazing people who are trying to fit into our society. Um, all I'm saying, though, is don't expect us to accommodate your beliefs, customs, and traditions and getting rid of our own. Complaining about our holidays and our laws regarding their clothing while working, boating, etc. These customs and beliefs and traditions, holidays and laws, make up what it means to be Canadian. Something we should take pride in and not be willing to compromise on. I don't move to a foreign country and expect them to change everything that they are as a country or people just to accommodate me. I implore you to not come to our country and alienate us. You are quite welcome to our country, just don't force changes on my country. Stop taking advantage of our hospitality, and more importantly, don't take advantage of our Prime Minister, who is a weakling. On to the next group. 
This one deserves a short statement before it. I'm all for women's rights, 100% behind that. Uh, women and men should have equal pay, equal opportunity, and everything else that the other gender has. That's a fundamental basic right of any human being on this planet, especially in Canada. Um, with that, though, comes making sure that you are not demanding more than equality and, and not special rights. Like having positions reserved in schools and at workplaces, school openings and jobs should be represented and reserved for whomever, despite race, gender, religion, or lifestyle choice, um, it should go to whoever is most qualified. If that means that it's a woman, great. That is, uh, this would be the case um, and is the case in many different situations. But you need to be more qualified and deserve it more based on merit. And when you do get the job, yes, you should get the same pay as any man in that position. Uh, the pay should be based on your experience. Uh, there would only be a few exceptions to this in fields that involve a certain race, gender, religion, or lifestyle choice. Um, then those uh, would be the ones who should be singled out for that particular job. The final group that I'll focus on, and again, it's not meant to attack or knock down this group. Um, I have respect for everybody and your beliefs are your beliefs. I am uh, referring to those in the pride movement. Um, and again, please don't get upset with me. I'm not dissing you or insulting you in any way. Um, I'm just fine with um, anybody in the pride movement taking a firm stance for their beliefs, lifestyle choice, and their rights, even if it isn't my lifestyle choice. We all have our lifestyles and beliefs that we're entitled to. However, I do have a problem with a religious institution being forced to perform marriages when it goes against their beliefs and lifestyle choices because then it guts prejudice going the opposite direction. Your beliefs and lifestyle are not better than anyone else's. Forcing yours on someone else does not bridge any, divide, any divides. And this applies to everybody, not just the pride movement, but everybody. In fact, what it really does is cause divides and makes these groups more set against you. And then we have battles against each other where they're all smashing each other in the news and on social media, and people are getting offended. Um, we all really need to just take a step back, understand that each of us are unique and wonderfully created, and to quit forcing our choices on others. We are all equal, we all deserve respect, but it has to go both ways. That is not to say the pride movement is the only party guilty of this because no, it's quite the opposite. It has to come from all Canadians. Forcing causes prejudice and anger. Many of these things being demanded are not about equality, but about special rights and privileges. Equality should be the goal, as is claimed, not to gain special treatment. The problem also comes with parades and weeks set aside as pride weeks or even other racial weeks. Why should this be done for one group of people and not for every other group of people? When suggested by a few people jokingly that they need a heterosexual parade or a particular day and week, they're deemed prejudiced and against the pride groups in general, which is not the case. Discrimination has nothing to do with this at all in most cases. Not all cases, but most cases. It is a feeling that they are being cast aside and discriminated against in return. They don't want things shoved down their throats, as the pride groups do not want anti-pride sentiments shoved down theirs. If this movement goes against personal beliefs or religions, it is discriminatory and antagonistic to expect them to change their beliefs and religions just to accommodate you whether Christian, Jewish, Muslim, etc. This is a matter of differing stances and everyone's right to believe in their own religion and lifestyle. I do commend everyone in the pride movement for having the incredible courage to come out and stand up for yourselves. Though in many cases, this could be done with a lot more tact. Uh, I could say this for many other movements out there as well and rallies and um, protests. It could be said for any of those things. Um, bringing the desire for true equality in mind needs to be first and foremost, not special rights. This all comes down to one thing. We're all human. We're all Canadians. We are all uniquely different, but we are all equal. And as such, 
No one deserves special treatment. Each human has the same value. And as such, the same rights, laws, and opportunities should be given to all. We all deserve what we are promised, and that is equality. On to the next point. I spent much more time on equality than was intended, and it is just so important that we are all equal and are treated as such. Uh, Lack of leadership is a huge issue in Canada right now. Our leader does not speak with confidence. He bumbles through his sentences, dodging questions completely, never bothering to answer Canadians as a whole. He does not lead with confidence either. Just a cocky arrogance he inherited from his father. His integrity and ethics are yet to be located. He has been caught insider trading, defrauding Canadians out of tax dollars to boost his personal residences, accepting bribes in the form of vacations and trips, forcing caucus members and the Attorney General to do his bidding. Uh, He is accused of groping a woman. He's accused of pedophilia. Um, and with that, he, it's, it's an accusation that he um, slept with a 16-year-old and then was uh, paying her to hide this. Again, that is just an accus- accusation. Um, and he's had a blatant disregard for the wishes of his people, which are all Canadians. Not the East, not Quebec, not Ontario, but all Canadians. He continues to ignore most of Canada and never fulfills promises. Then he jokes about it later, and and he can't balance a budget. Uh, Never mind meddling in the ethics committees that have been uh, put in place to investigate him. He has abused his power with no accountability. He claims to be a feminist, but women who leave his party claim the exact opposite. He embarrasses Canada abroad in every country he goes to bringing shame upon our proud country, making us the laughingstock of the world. Then we get to all the foreign deals he's failed us on, money that he has cost our country by spending without restraint, giving Canada its largest deficit in years, easily corrected by fixing our farming and oil industries. Finally, his mismanagement of our resources has been detrimental. His actions have driven a further wedge into the divide and disconnect uh, that our country already feels. He will be the cause of our nation's folly, its ultimate destruction, which is what the American organizations backing and securely or secretly funding Trudeau really desire, a humbled Canada allowing them to shut down all of our resources to bolster their own agendas and put more money in their own pockets. The final point that I'm gonna cover is our lackluster immigration policies. Uh, I won't won't spend a lot of time on this as I covered some of this before. Immigration is a good thing in moderation. Our unique diversity makes us Canadian and gives us pride as a nation. We do need to have strict guidelines and rules for it, though, as we used to. But Trudeau and the Liberal Party have weakened these guidelines and rules. We now have far more immigration than our country and economy can realistically support. We also have made it too easy to sneak terrorists into the country not betting more strictly in known terrorist supporting countries. Same with buying oil from them. When we know exactly where that money is going to support terrorism. This has endangered our Canadian citizens, as well as our neighbors to the south, the Americans. We have also diluted our own traditions to the point of losing our identity of what it means to be Canadian. If asked what it means to be Canadian, I would struggle to come up with a clear picture. So immigration is a wonderful thing. It just needs to be cautious to be done in ca- to be done cautiously and in moderation. To conclude, this is a beautiful country, a country I love and would hate to leave. I would hate to see it spread apart and split. Canada is a country in great tor- turmoil. Uh, A country that is so full of division and frustration and very little respect between the divisive parties that it threatens to tear apart our great nation. If anything is ignored and nothing is done to fix this division, Canada will not survive. Our nation will simply implode, splintering the confederation that our forefathers fought to create and keep together. It will be likely into three different areas, Quebec, the rest of the East, and the West. Um, Without 
the West, the East would really struggle to keep this country together. If changes are not made um, that sh show that every province, West or East, matters and that their voices are heard, we will lose our Canada. Canada will become a memory, a folklore, a story passed on to future generations. Our nation um, will not be able to survive this at all if things are not done to make differences and changes in our country. I, along with many others in this nation, call for our Prime Minister to step up, listen to the voices of Canada for one moment in your life. Prime Minister Trudeau, do not be the cause of our nation dissolving. You are already to blame for this growing discord between the halves of our country, not only you, but your party. Show Canada that you truly know how to care about something beyond yourself and not just act on it. Believe it, your actions speak volumes. The same actions that right now are speaking hate. Show Canada that you care, that you are even capable of showing true concern. Give all provinces and territories proper representation. Consider all of our resources and show respect for those who make up our great nation. We are all Canadians. Thank you. Remember to like and subscribe.